Hi, in this video I want to show you this book I have. This is Differential Equations and Linear Algebra, and this one is written by Edwards and Penny. And so this book is a little bit different from other books on differential equations uh, because it has other content. In particular, it has the linear algebra. Also, um, there are examples in this book that you won't find in other books. So I just thought I would make this short video to show you some of the stuff that's in this book. It's pretty cool. So when you open it up, you have a table of Laplace transforms. These are super useful because these are used to um, compute the Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms. And you can use those to solve certain differential equations. In particular, use uh, Laplace transforms to solve something called initial value problems. Uh, and then here we have a table of integrals. And so here's a quick look at the contents. So it starts off with like first order DEs. So this part is like still very, very standard. These are the things that you would cover in most college courses. And then two is on mathematical models and numerical methods. Three is on linear systems and matrices. Four is on vector spaces, which is pretty cool. There's an entire chapter on vector spaces. I think that makes this a really cool book because it has that extra content. Five is on linear equations of higher order. It's a good place to have linear algebra before, before doing that. Then eigenvalues and eigenvectors, an entire chapter devoted to that. Linear systems of differential equations. And then matrix exponential methods, really cool. Nonlinear systems and phenomena, Laplace transform methods, and then power series solutions at the very end. It's interesting because uh, this is going to sound random, but they put power series at the end and they put the Laplace transform right before it. Um, that's actually when I teach differential equations, that's exactly how I do it. Um, I, um, I've always done it that way, and not all books have that order. So, yeah, cool. Let's take a look at the exercises in the section on general vector spaces. So these are some of the exercises. Determine whether or not the indicated set of 3x3 three three matrices is a subspace of M33. Cool. And then same thing here, you just have to determine if this is a subspace of some other vector space. Those are pretty fun questions. I actually have videos of, not from this book, but I have examples like this on my channel. It's kind of cool. Yeah, you have functions here to determine if they're linearly independent. So this is something you would do um, in a DE course. So most books will teach this topic, even if they don't contain um, the linear algebra that this book contains. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's take a look at the answers to see you know, how much we have in terms of answers. I'm pretty sure it's just the odds in this book. Okay, so they chose to use the word selected. So you know when it says answers to odd problems, you're going to get the odds. But when it says selected, you're either going to get very little or you're gonna get more than the odds, you know? So it's, it's always a gamble when it says that, but let's take a look. I haven't really done too many problems from this book. I've read a few of the sections and I've looked at some of the stuff in here on Laplace transforms. That's really what uh, I've looked at and some of the linear algebra stuff as well. Yeah, so quite a few of the solutions. This is a section on derivatives, integrals, and products of transforms. And here it talks about the convolution of two functions. And then it goes on to the convolution property for Laplace transforms, differentiation of transforms. And these are topics that if you take a DE class, you might not see these topics. That's why I wanted to show them to you because um, you might not see them. Um, I have videos on some of these topics on the channel, integration of transforms. But uh, when I've taught DE, uh, I haven't been able to cover like this. This is something I've never been able to, to cover in a classroom. So you've got a lot of cool topics in here that you might not see even if you take a class. So I think it makes it a cool book to have just in case you want to see some things that you might not see when you take a DE course. So here I have another DE book that I wanted to show you. So this is a first course in differential equations with modeling applications. And so this one, if you look at the size difference, this one is a lot thinner. It's wider, but it's thinner. So there's a lot less topics uh, in this one. And this one's pretty good. I would definitely say that I feel like the difficulty level on this one, perhaps because it just has more content and it has things that this one doesn't have, um, this is a bit of a higher level book. Plus, I mean, it is differential equations and linear algebra. So you're getting uh, linear algebra as well. But very, very different books. This is also very different from um, like the Saf and Snyder book 
uh, which I have, and I wanted to show you in this video, but I can't find it. Uh, I'm currently trying to organize my books, so that is a huge task and a huge mess. <laughs> so, but yeah, overall, I think this book here is pretty interesting. I just wanted to make this video to show you, you know, the book. It's pretty cool. It's got, let's just, let's just glance at some of the stuff it's got in here. So Matrix Operations, that's an entire, entire section. Just basic Matrix Edition, looks like. Matrix Edition. Some more Matrix Edition here. Interesting, here you have to compute um, the matrices ABC, the product, and um, verify by computation of both sides the associative law. So you basically have to compute the product ABC um, two different ways, and then just to verify the associative law. So it doesn't seem like a hard problem, just kind of tedious. So you know, there's a lot of you know, stuff that I feel like most calculus students can jump in and, and learn this. You know, the prereq for DE, by the way, is um, Calc 2. So if you have some Calc 2, you could, you know, you could buy this book or this book or any DE book, and in theory, you could jump into it. But I say Calc 2 because you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to integrate. You know, you want to make sure you can actually, like, compute integrals and stuff. Uh, you want to know how to use integration by parts, integration by substitution. Um, trig sub does come up, but it's not as much as you think. Partial fractions is huge. So all of those things you want to learn uh, before you jump into a DE course. And Calc 2 is the class that uh, would give you those skills. But yeah, beautiful subject. Both great books. Uh, I'm not going to say one is better than the other. I feel like they're different. Um, they're both good. So, and I have other really good DE books as well. So yeah, cool stuff. Just wanted to make this random video. I am outside today. I said, let me just sit outside and make a video and just show you some of my books. So thanks for uh, subscribing and until next time, take care. Okay, I wanted to show you one more thing before ending the video and that's this problem here. So this is in chapter 11, which is power series method. And these problems are really interesting because they're so long, they take forever to do. I maybe have just a few on my channel right now and I mean, I have a ton of videos, maybe only two or three of these types of problems because they're so long. And let's just walk through it so you know how to do it. So basically you take um, a power series centered at zero and you plug it in. You assume that your solution has the form of a power series. So you plug it in and you differentiate the, differentiate the series. There's some technicalities, but you get here. Then you have to do an index shift. Again, some technicalities there that, you know, that's a whole nother video. You do a shift you get there, and then um, you basically factor out the sums like this, set it equal to zero, and then equate coefficients. And then you get this here, they call this a recurrence relation, okay? So, and these are the initial conditions, and you have to solve this recurrence relation to get a pattern for the coefficients, which you then plug back into the original function, y. So you figure out c sub n, you plug that in. I mean, look how much work this is. So it doesn't look like that much work on paper, but like when you do one of these problems, or just, rather it doesn't look like that much work in the book, but when you do one of these problems uh, on paper, it's even more, it's even more shocking. But yeah, anyways, random, just wanted to show you some more stuff. Good luck.